Welcome, guys and gals, to the Some Ordinary Podcast. I'm Caleb, and then this is my friend Muda, and then this is Nux, and then this is Zeepster, who makes inf- informational content. Uh, on what? <laughs> <laughs> we, we just met, like, you uh, just heard of me, like... Probably yeah, like 10 yeah. minutes ago, so... Entertainment. I, I've probably seen a video before, to be honest with you. I watch a lot of uh, icebergs and stuff like that. I, I, I'm i sure I have, but I probably wasn't watching my phone. I was probably listening to your sultry voice. Oh, I, I appreciate it. So, But, yeah. okay, so I make uh, videos on... It used to be about politics and history, but then I eventually I was like, it's kind of boring. So now I make yeah. videos on like ver- a variety of stuff. Uh, last year I was really big into like icebergs, the, but now I'm like... That's the biggest growth arc I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I made politics content and I found it was boring. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> It was like during the 2016 oh. election. I was like really into like oh. politics and uh, eventually, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't really favor that in the algorithm anymore. So it's just like, eh, might as well try... Are you kidding me? Stuff. That's all I get fed these days really? through autoplay. Did you do like uh, yeah. red-pilled feminist getting it on? Or what did you? Uh, I was actually or was it like objective no. historical stuff. Uh, it was like a mix of uh, some red pilled feminists getting owned. Nice. And a mix of also like uh, I don't know, like re- studying about Washington, George Washington, or like uh, Theodore Roosevelt okay. or whatever. But now that's cool. It's like eventually, I was like, this is kind of cringe. So I moved on to like talking about Breaking Bad and like. Way iceberg cooler. videos, uh, more and awesome based stuff. You're like heard of you. George Washington or meth. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It's all about smash, smash or pass all 46 U.S. presidents. Now that is content. Do you know that one of the presidents enjoyed cocaine quite heavily? Oh well, yeah, probably, probably more than more one, brother. Than one president. <laughs> yeah, probably most. No, but one, one that we really know of, one that came in the wake of post 2000. That one. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let the audience figure out who that is. But yeah, uh, right now I do like lost stuff. Like that's what the algorithm re- algorithm really likes right now is me talking about like uh, lost characters, like people who used to be like, oh hey, this character was in this one episode of a TV show, but or this character used to be in this one episode of a movie, but we can't seem to find like any remnants of him. So I try and like research just like this character actually exists, and every now and then it's just. Uh, it's usually some made up like BS, but every now and then they're real. Every now and then they're real. The lost characters end up being real. You find that one obscure episode they exist on. Yeah. So like, uh, I think you saw this recently, the Graggle Simpson meme, like that made up yeah. character on the Simpsons. Wait, wait, wait. You remind me which one? I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest Simpsons guy. So, so Graggle Simpson was allegedly this character who was on, uh, uh, the Simpsons, who was part of the family. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, I've seen this. And he's like this. It's like, yeah, like, yeah. like a Mandela effect type meme. Yeah, he's like this naked yellow, like, fish type of, like, fish thing. Yeah. Graggle Simpson. Graggle Wait, brother. what? Yeah, it's real. I've seen it. It's not real. No, it's Just kidding. Not. I lied. Yeah. Dude, I've that, seen the memes, dude, though. Yeah. Okay, you have to be pretty... You have to be pretty high to you believe be pretty that. What, Muda? <laughs> pretty what? Pretty <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you have to be pretty, pretty neurodivergent to believe oh my that. I, I love it, though, because <laughs> some people are, like, trying to, like, gaslight people who are, like, just yeah. dumb. Yeah. Just, like, actually, like, right. just dumb into believing mm-hmm. that, like, no, he's actually real. He actually existed. Yeah, but, like, see, that doesn't... See, the, here's the thing. You get, that, that means those people are really, really off the deep end of stupidity because i don't watch simpsons okay like i watched episode one of it and i got bored because i was like i think these people just have like a gland disorder or something that's why they're all yellow so i just like went off but even i know the simpsons family doesn't have it okay to me i feel like if you watch you know family guy funny videos on youtube you basically watch the simpsons you know like it's effectively one or the other for me you know so i don't really jump into the simpsons that hard but I, even i knew graggle wasn't real i have a i have a suggestion or a potential question do you do you have you ever done anything on the twilight zone i have not done one on the twilight zone actually there is an episode i believe i've never seen it but for some reason i have a memory implanted in my brain of william shatner in the in the in the twilight zone on an airplane and he looks over sees nothing on the wing looks back there's like clouds looks over again and there's a monster on the wing and then he looks back and then looks back over and it's gone Looks back and looks back over and it's no, closer. No, dude, I've seen that. You've I've seen, seen that. that. What do you, and yeah. he's like, there's some one, something on 
The wing. Uh, yeah, no, I've seen that. I've, I swear to God, I've seen that, but I can't find it. I don't know where to like. Yeah, I can't find it either. So that, that's got to be, that that's going to be a lost, for you uh, to look into. The, the creepy monster on the wing with William Shatner. William Shatner. Dude, yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of those old running shows that are like. <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Write that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta look so at all the. So passionate these. about anything. Well, I mean, like, hey, it's William Shatner in a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. I mean, like, hey. there's some one, something. I was flying to Orlando last uh, last year, and I thought about that exact episode because it was the first time I flew in like over ten years, and I was like uh, having like some like flight anxiety. I'm just like, what if, what if that does happen? Like, you know, what if there was just like something on my on the plane right now oh. that just rips it to shreds and I just die? Oh, dude. That would suck. Could you ma- could you imagine the TikTok videos I get made out of me? I'd probably like upload like my last video, like like try and get like signal while I'm going down. Like guys, this is the end of Zeebster. You'd pay for the in flight Wi Fi just to <laughs> upload your death on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. pretty. TikTok, that's pretty fun. That final hey guys, this is the end. <laughs> you know that dancing to the, like the new <laughs> sound or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you get up in the middle of the aisle and you just do like a little TikTok <laughs> portal. Start flossing. That'd be really awesome. funny, actually. Oh. In hell you know tiktok is just one of those platforms where like it's so wild like um you know it, it's crazy to film this as the live deletion of the tape begins because yeah. that's where i first learned about like my buddy told me about this character right like in a month or something ago and i found all of his clips on tiktok and it's so insane that we're filming this right now as he's being deleted on tiktok he's going on YouTube. youtube now too yeah yeah youtube yeah. literally yeah. lasts uh, within an hour of here like it's so funny when we initially had the time to film this podcast at like noon he was still on youtube i yeah. know him now i know we deleted Dude, a little bit he's gone he delayed it by three hours and this man's been yeah. killed in between yep. I know. <laughs> youtube literally assassinated the guy you want me to call now, him i'll call him i got his phone number oh my god Dude, how, you holding, up, buddy? how <laughs> you holding up buddy how you holding up buddy i'm in my bugai in the history of twitter i've never ratioed anyone as hard as i have today so on the Tate tweet that it said Andrew Tate's been permanently banned from TikTok, this dude with like a uh, My Hero Academia Bakugo profile picture says, doesn't matter, he will still live forever. And Bakugo just... <laughs> yeah, I saw that! <laughs> I saw that too. I didn't get it though. <laughs> I didn't get it. I liked, I liked your tweet. I was like, good job, Nox. So, Thanks, I, man. Good job. Ratio. I've never Help ratioed brother. someone where they have 22 <laughs> likes and I have 2,200 likes. Ooh. I've never ratioed someone that hard. It's not really so much um, a ratio as it is an orbital cannon hitting you from <laughs> the yeah, fucking yeah, sky. Yeah, that's a uh, total annihilation. <laughs> oh, so I hell. saw this moment no. morning. He was, like, owned off of, like, not just, uh, it's not, like, just, like, meta things now. It's, like, YouTube and, like, TikTok, right? He's, like, mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. Completely yeah. deplatformed, yeah. I've heard with the Facebook stuff. So my thing is, I made that tweet where I was like, oh, I don't like this guy, but I don't think banning the dude makes any sense. And I, I say that from a perspective where I see characters like Alex Jones and all these like banned personalities, and they just keep getting stronger and their views keep going higher when they're on like alternative platforms. But well, not their views keep going higher because that's 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 not logical because they're not on platforms. Like, but the people that follow them become more extreme. And, and fringe, you know what I mean? Like, hey, this is the truth they removed from the internet. So I feel like when a person gets banned that's so high profile, I feel like a lot of these websites, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, need to provide like an actual like proper reasoning to the world on why they were removed, right? Like, yeah, it's one thing removed Andrew Tate. Now I've heard a million things about like Facebook. One of the most consistent has been that he was removed because of like violent and criminal organizations or like relations to that. And it's interesting because I've seen so many clips of this guy going, if I want you taken care of, we can make one call and have your passport taken away yeah, or no, like no. killed or no, thrown no, no, in no. a ditch. Yeah, yeah. I can make yeah. one call and they'll find you in yeah. a ditch. You know? So Please, so, so I'm just like sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, okay, no one who's in that lifestyle would ever brazenly admit something like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Unless they're, they're really they're, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Or, or unless you're flexing, they're operating from like... You're flexing and you're like all the 14-year-olds are going to be like, oh my god, yeah. he has a hitman. Well, well, it's it's different too. So like when you go to like cartel TikTok, right? Like which is a thing, all right? Like cartel operatives showcasing their guns and like actual like post-warfare like experiences. We right? do not like condone dead bodies it. and shit. We don't condone we don't it whatsoever. We don't condone it. They they do that in order to intimidate the other enemy, right? Like, obviously, these guys are all on TikTok. When they start seeing, like, 
300 videos of like the other criminal faction killing their guys they're probably going to be scared it's an intimidation tactic but the other thing is they use vehicles money nice cars to like entice more younger people to jump into their organizations right so it's like it's one thing and also when those criminals are doing it they're doing it from places like mexico where there's not so much um you know government control right like parts of mexico are still literally under the hands of like actual violent organizations so he's sitting in a place talking about this kind of stuff and, you know, he talks about his casinos and everything. And it's like, you know, you're operating businesses that are like the highest, um, you know what I mean? Like the highest risk for any form of money laundering. But you're also kind of like linking yourself to like corrupt Criminals. criminal organizations. Yeah. yeah. Why are you leading so much insinuation of your character down this path? Obviously, no private organization is going to associate with you. Right. So it's like. It's it's the other thing, right? Like if John Gotti it's, comes and makes a YouTube channel, beast. you know how like what yeah. got what got clicks in 2016 were people flexing that they had expensive shirts and expensive hoodies and expensive shoes. Yeah, this is just hype beast taken to an extreme. Yeah, I feel like that would be an interesting thing for you to cover, Zeep. The hype beast uh, uh, iceberg, because there's been I think this has been like a thing since like the Logan. Honestly, the Paul brothers kind of kicked off the hype beast era. Yeah. The rice gums, if you yeah. will, right? Like, yeah, I think the rice gum. Like rice gum yeah. My next one yeah. is actually about a. Uh, uh, you know, I got to use the clickbaity uh, thumb uh, title. The the darkest TikTok scammers. It's actually covering multiple people on the app who've uh, tried to scam. And Andrew Tate is a uh, even though he's not really Pink a TikToker, sauce? he's kind of Pink still sauce? on there. Pink sauce. Pink sauce is on Pink there. Sauce. Pink sauce is Let's on go. there. Well, the thing is, you can't say the Tate thing is necessarily a scam, right? Like, obviously, for legal reasons, you can't say yeah. that things like hustlers, universities, or scams. I think what's more important is you have to talk about why these programs exist, right? Like, when you make online university courses that target sort of people... First off, I have to say this. If you ever buy a $50 course from somebody teaching you how to get rich, you're never going to get rich. Simple yeah. as that, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, just before this podcast, we were talking about the Bugatti thing, right? Bugatti. Like, you can spend, like, let's say that you, you have the money for a Bugatti, right? Like, most people, like, not most people, but, like, let's say, like, if you were in that class where you had the $3 million for a Bugatti Pure Sport, right? Or a Chiron or whatever models they have. Now, is it smarter to buy a $3 million f***ing supercar, okay, that you're going to drive, you know, every once in a while? Because it ain't your daily driver. You're not daily driving a Bugatti around the streets, okay? Somebody dents your Bugatti, brother, in your insurance premium you're gonna feel that for like years yeah that's not good <laughs> right exactly or would you spend the three million dollars onto like property or an investment that can you know better yourself later on obviously the smart choice is the property so people who want to teach you how to get rich are not going to be driving those fancy cars as dailies the people that buy cars like that and buy houses just to show off on social media and then attach it to a course that's where their money is coming in from they're using image intimidation to just get you on so you can be like, ah, this guy knows what he's doing, right? Like, this guy's got the house. This guy's got the money. Let's follow his route. But realistically, you're just financing this dumbass. And that's most of the courses that you'll ever find on TikTok, dude. I mean, that's par for the course. I have more respect for shit like Pink Sauce than I have, like, these scam courses. Yeah. Because yeah. at least Pink Sauce is a f***ing actual product, yeah. you know? And it's it might pink. kill you. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty forward. That's progressive color. It's also so an – another thing that's so weird, speaking of the sauces uh, – the sauces, the courses before you get into Pink Sauce – Um. A lot of influencer courses and stuff like that, they teach you how to blow up on social media, you know, like how to do this mm -hmm. for a living. And it's supposed to replicate some sort of success, but none of the people that actually give the courses succeed in the ways that they're promoting. Like no. An Andrew Tate, he grew as um, as a, you know, cam girl provocateur, pimp, yeah. cam girl pimp mm -hmm. basically, right? Yeah, or and provocateur. That, or that. Yeah. But that that's not what he's teaching in Hustlers University. You know, he's teaching you about like Amazon yeah. affiliate links. Okay. And mm -hmm. drop shipping. A, a lot of the courses that are, you know, become world famous social media influencer by joining my course, you'll go to their YouTube channel and they have sixty four subscribers and they're yeah. trying to sell you on fame and millions and stuff. It's yeah. just it's a really weird dynamic where people buy into this. Pink sauce, by the way, still haven't got mine. Dude, I, I feel like the Pepto Bismol supply chain is fucked yep. up, so she's not able to grab that and put it into the bottle for you. I think have like to wait. Yep. there's a company that's trying to make it like a legit thing. Like they they made a deal with uh, the chick who made pink sauce to like actually like put it on like uh, co manufacture it. Yeah, like, like to actually like manufacture wow. it. So like I she do it. won. I got the equipment. She won in the end. Bruh. 
And she got the ultimate promotion. Yeah. Damn, I kind of want to like update this video. That's kind of sick. <laughs> she got she got her she won. Yeah. Dude. The pink sauce lady won. <laughs> Dude. I mean, my my thing is, I don't care if she's like trying to do a business. Just do it the right way. Don't don't send out fucking fuck products that might hurt people. Yeah, don't don't make sauce in your kitchen yeah. and yeah, good. She's good at marketing. Yeah, what? A, she's kind of the Andrew Tate of of condiments. I I don't think she's good at marketing. I think the stupidity just, just like, went viral. Though. It's just like you see that, and then she's just like, oh, I'm not gonna tell you what it tastes like. You're yeah. gonna have to order. It. Like, I it's like an easy marketing strategy. You know? I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I think it, it's more accidental. It's like saying that um, uh, Deaf Noodles' new comedy special is a oh, masterpiece dude. because everyone's talking brother. about it. No, 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 brother, no, 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 no. brother. I, I actually so I, I heard that Deaf Noodles once worked for the U.S. government. Actually, what? Because they, yeah, no, it's insane. So he worked in a in Guantanamo Bay. Like he was forced to literally just give these comedy roast lessons in front of these fucking terrorists. His interrogation lessons. It was insane. No, I'm fucking Dude, with you it, guys. It's, it this... Or am I? Did you see me believing you or and then realizing you're <laughs> bullshitting me? I, I believe you. said Guantanamo Bay. I was like, bro, what? I believed so. every word. I am so disappointed. Because this man, he's a masterpiece. I don't know how, like, who has a humiliation fetish this strong? that he He's a, the least funny fucking person I've ever. I literally thought I, now my case for him being Steven Crowder is even more justified, bro. No, no, no. I, Caleb, I saw you smirking at that uh, baby shark Biden farts, 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 Biden farts. Dude, what is going on in the world right now? I don't like, I almost logged off because of that. Can, can you imagine yeah, paying? A I literally went on Google monthly. and searched up Biden ripping ass. <laughs> I was like, wait, oh. what is this linking to? Uh, is that why you don't make political content? Because you have to, you, you'd have to make a reaction video to that. That's what, it, k kind of actually, technically, <laughs> I like the 2020 election oh. happened and things happened like every day. And how I liked making my political mm -hmm. stuff is I liked it being like edited and nice and stuff. But with everything happening right. like every day, I'm just like, I, I don't care. I don't have the time to do this. Yeah, you anymore. can't keep yeah. up with the quartering, bro. Yeah, you just can't. He's too. You can't. You can't keep up with the political channels. There's 20 videos a minute. Come on. He's just like so much more like smarter than I am. The quartering and like he's a DARPA. And he's a DARPA experiment. He's a plant. I don't know. He's a I, DARPA I, plant, my friend. Fed. I saw a statistic that straight up destroys the quartering's entire world view. Did you know that the average bust size of female characters in comics has actually increased by 300 percent in the last 10 years? Because <laughs> right, the chemicals in the milk. <laughs> They're feeding yeah. them with their kids. It's it's the chemtrails too. The chem That's trails. what gets them going. <laughs> the silver, silver, uh, the silver, the silver ions in the in the atmosphere. Jesus Christ! No, but I saw the Biden farting thing from like uh, I think Jay actually retweeted, and I saw it popped up on my feed. And at first, I was like, I was like, wait, is this a meme? And then I clicked no. on, it and I was like, oh god! Like you know how something can be so cringe and bad that instead of turning it off in the first five seconds, you actually just watch the whole thing. Yeah. Because you're just like, no, I'm going to process it all. And I'm going to take it. It was also not a hint of irony from Steven Crowder either. That was the beauty. Yeah. He's like, the best, this is definitely better. This is better than even Baby Shark, which I love. I love Baby Dude. Shark. Now listen to this. It's called Biden Farts. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Because he's a president, and he's farting, and he's old. Yeah, I was like, I was like, man, if you never ripped ass, yeah, like, dude, what? what? I think if that song was about me, I'd be flattered. Personally, I think that's like a, it's like a top tier Biden moment. That's like a good Biden moment. Yeah, I don't... yeah, exactly. That's better than chocolate, chocolate chip, or the bicycle, or well, well, you know, he was the... like trying to quote the Constitution. He's like, it's like what the Constitution says, the f -f 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 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Well, it's, it's not. It's like to, to sum up America in a single word. <laughs> yeah, there's a multiple moments of in which when, in which he's just not spoken English or any sort of discernible uh, language or phrase. Well, my thing with him sounds. is like, if you're gonna make oh. those memes about Biden, right, like him farting, why wasn't there a fucking drone strike joke somewhere in there, dude? Like, at least get topical and funny, brother. Like, yeah. god damn, there's like nothing that it's like he's just running around farting. Like, I'm like, is that it? Is that really? I just, it, that's I just that's the like thing about it's, politics. It's, def it's definitely catchier than the drone goes strike, 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 strike. It just doesn't work as well. Oh, come on. The drone goes strike, strike, strike. Dude, he could have made what does the fox say, dude? What does the fuck? Bro. He could have, like, riffed on that, dude. I'm thinking of a lot no. of horrible things to say right now, and I'm not going to say any of them. Yeah. Oh, come on. I'll just say they involve Afghani hospitals.
Ah, yeah, I, I won't say it out it, loud. It all comes back. Yeah, it, it is. It is in in criticism of the United States government and their their willingness to use drones to just solve problems. Brother, you've been hanging out near Hassan Piker too much. Come on. No, 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 no. I'm just a uh, isolationist. I don't like yeah. war. I don't, I don't so. like getting involved in beef either. It makes yeah. no sense. But going back to Deaf Noodles, one of the worst comedy shows that we've ever seen. Yeah, so yeah. I was there for that live stream. At first on Twitch, it got taken down. I think somebody threw like the F slur on there. Like they just like oh. the homophobic one. So I'm not so I think, I'm not too familiar with this. Could you explain the, the entire rundown? Okay. So Deaf Noodles has been kind of going on some fucking weird Joker arc. You know who Deaf yeah. Noodles is, right? Like the satirical Minecraft cat ears, like house, like that Dude, kind of yeah. guy. Like he, he covers he, he thinks he's a news drama. Channel. He's a comedian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's a news reporter that thinks he's a comedian. My bad. You guys, you guys are slandering. He's a satire channel. Ooh. Now, by satire, I mean like, okay. So here, here's the definition. Let's say I upload a video, right? I'm like, Oompaville is a known misogynist. Proof, one hundred percent. True. Right. Even though it's complete bullshit. Like Oompaville right. is not a misogynist. He's the most like he's the least misogynistic guy. I know. That's true. Totally cool dude. But he'll title that video that way, right? So everybody who's looking at that, like, here, here's the thing with YouTube, brand, they'll be like, oh my god, Oompa's. That, he'll make it look like a drama thing, and then he'll you'll watch the video. And uh, he'll make these claims, but then, like, if you call him out on these these claims and lack of research, he'll be like, "Oh, I, I'm just a I'm just satire channel, bro. I'm parody. How, come on now, like I like it's it's outlandish shit. It's like T channel territory, except somehow slightly even worse. And we're talking about T channels, like you know how T channels do investigations. Yeah. Do you want to know how that yeah. works? They they read they read a tweet and then they talk about the tweet for ten minutes, talking about how it makes them feel. Listen. Listen, they'll get, like, body linguists to, like, read the body. Right, right now, they'll look at you and be like, ah, you're in a stance, you're in a lying stance, okay? You're in a defensive stance. Sometimes they'll whip out <laughs> the old tarot cards. Like, they'll have the old tarot cards, and they'll flip them through and be like, ah, you've got the arcana of lies. Or they'll look you, into the crystal joking. ball. No way. I hope, I hope that's real, honestly. You're spinning Wait, so many this... webs of lies <laughs> today, Muda. I, I, can't tell the, no. I can't tell if this is real or not. No, I'm, no, I'm not even no, joking. No, it's like, joking, joking. no, I'm not joking. <laughs> Am I being gaslit about a T? No, you're not, in, the, in the next week, I'm going to show you a pedophile allegation through tarot cards. <laughs> no so way, I, dude. Just what? You'll, you'll see it. Please. <laughs> Because because it's it's going to be wild indeed. But that's that's the kind of like T-Channel shit you're looking at. But anyways, uh, he's been on this the weird cupcake arc. cupcake card. I see. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This card could either stand for diabetes or diddling. That <laughs> one or the card. other. <laughs> yeah, it's like, at first it's like gluttony and then it's the cupcake. <laughs> so, yeah, but. But uh, but yeah. So so Def Noodles has been on this like Joker arc for a little bit, right? Like he's kind of like you know fucking losing it with everyone. So he's built this comedy club. Yeah. And uh, two nights ago, he did this stream on Twitch of these roast battles, and it was just like it, like first off, the way that it's filmed looks like YouTube. it's well, it was Twitch and then YouTube. But yeah. he got banned on Twitch, so it like <laughs> moved see. to YouTube because I guess YouTube's a little more cool with the slurs, I guess, compared to Twitch. I don't know. But so he he does a stream, and so look, to describe the stream to you, it's kind of like looking at CCTV footage of Skid Row, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you, you, you're you're a, you're a SoCal resident, yeah. you know you know the you know the I know yeah, I know so the it's like looking over it, its, yeah, the yeah the brilliance yeah. of well, Skid Row. I, I, I would imagine the smell in that room is rivaling that too. But he has a CCTV footage basically of this comedy club. And the roasts are like bad. Like they're they're just like the com it's like anti comedy. Dude, my, like my favorite Aww. roast was when Deaf Noodles leaned in and said to the girl he was roasting, "I see that the knees on your pants are torn." That was the roast. Yes. <laughs> was that the, yeah, was that, that, that 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 was the roast? Yeah, oh my god, that's pretty good. Yeah, she, she like this is the kind of. From it. I, I feel I feel like she she was trying to look at she was like googling temporary restraining orders on her phone at that point like and her me. response was but something yeah. akin to oh yeah well the, the knees on your mom's pants are torn like wow destroyed yeah it was pretty bad like you ever there was an old show back when I was a kid called Yo Mama the Good the show. jokes on yeah the the jokes on Yo Mama were way funnier <laughs> way funnier season two was way funnier than this Jeff Noodle ship. I would wager that there are like tragic national like tragedies, like environmental tragedies that are funnier than this comedy show. I wish Hassan was here right now. 
<laughs> Why is he? You can see the chair as he walked away. He's like I'm all watching. No, no. Chair. So that he could, t- you know, name some of these tragedies that he found more righteous. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know it's funny because like every time like I get shit for like knowing him or like talking to him, they're like, you know, that guy is just a government plant to talk about. I'm like, wait, first off, how? Have you ever seen what he got canceled for? I'm like, God damn, I'm surprised the dude came back from the America like 9-11 take back in the day. Jesus Christ. But um, you know, it, it's I don't know. It's it's a it's a weird thing with, with him. Like um it, it's he, I feel like he's one of like the most hated creators on the internet, but somehow yet like the most like there there's a when you're into the politics sphere, and this is why it's great that you stopped making it. Oh, I, I thought you were still talking about because, Def Noodles for a second. Like he's the most hated. No, I, I, yeah. no we're talking about well, Hassan Piker. Like, yeah. Def Noodles is one of the most yeah. pitied. Hassan is, is more hated. Hassan than is like hated though. Like yeah, Hassan yeah. could Hassan like fucking every time like he buys a car, which granted, whenever he buys shit like that, I feel like he does it with the sole intention of knowing it's going to draw some criticism oh, and yeah. like trends. He's you know, for like sure. Yeah, like, when he bought that Porsche and made that, like, video of him buying it, I'm like, you know that this is going to spark something. Come on now. Like, this is the game being played. But, yeah, like, this is why, like, making the political content, and I'm glad that you got out of it, because, like, the content you make now is, like, way more interesting, but also it's, like, the least inflammatory to get you in trouble on the internet, because when you're on the politics side, it's just team sports on the internet. You can't actually even be objective mm-hmm. in what you want to talk about. I think I would, you know, like, and that's why I kind of got out of it. I kind of like just started to hate it. Uh, mm-hmm. I liked editing the videos. I liked trying to make it like engaging. Cause I remember the comments here and then they were just like, I hope you continue with this stuff. And then like all of a yeah. sudden I've just dropped it and I'm just like, I, I might go back to it in like a, I don't know, live stream type of setting, but I don't, I don't know if I could ever. Did you ever join the debate stuff? No. Do you watch no, debate content? No. I don't see myself being in the debate stuff because I, uh, from uh, the things I've heard, it's just complete like garbage. The entire. Well, thing. I have to ask you do you, Do you have a job? This is one thing. Like to get. A I'm little, actually leaving uh, like, my job next yeah. month to do YouTube full time. Uh, but but you've had yeah, a job, yeah, right? Like yeah, you've you've had a you've had a, yeah, yeah. So you've worked consistently, which is why you wouldn't be at a debate channel because yeah. You're not unemployed. You actually have responsibilities <laughs> instead of seven hours a day on Twitch. I think the funniest <laughs> thing is that, uh, so a couple months ago, I told my dad, like, hey, I know I promised I would be a teacher, but uh, I'm going to I'm gonna be a YouTuber instead, dad. I'm going to do this and see where mm-hmm. I go. And trying to, that, that entire conversation with uh, my father being like, wait, no, no, I, trust me, give me a couple months and uh, I'll, I'll do pretty okay. And right now the channel's been doing well and he's proud of me, but. At that point, you thought like, "Oh my God, what did I do? How did I yeah. raise my kid to do this stupid, you know, online internet thing?" thing. Yeah. yeah, no, I get you. Do you know how awkward it was when my parents found out that I made videos on the internet? <laughs> what happened? You know that on on my Twitch chat every day, people call me Mudahar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Wait, really? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Because you introduce yourself as Nux Taku. It, uh, okay, all right. Well, I didn't know that they were suddenly Twitch viewers and they were going to jump no, no, on no, and they come see in. the podcast and they're yeah. like, oh, this would be funny. And then they just call me Mudahar. I mean, I still do. Like, the every time, like, anybody is like, hey, do I recognize you? Do I know your channel? I just either say I'm Oompaville or Nuxtaku. And they'll believe it. Like, That's awesome. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll check. Like, it's like they know what I look like. They know my face, but they just they'll don't know the channel attributed. It. It's just so like, okay. I will take advantage of your naivete. Yeah, ex- exactly. I'm That's Oompa all Phil. I pretty much do. But, uh, like, when it comes to, like, when my parents were, like, uh, like my mom pretty much just, like, asked me because, like, it started to get shared around in the family a little bit. And uh, I remember the, the only thing she had a complaint was, like, you can't swear too much, honey. Those are bad words. And I was like, okay. okay mom. I mean, I've never done this as a job, so to speak. So I don't, I don't know if I could ever have the conversation back then if I could be like, hey, dad, I want to be a YouTuber for a living. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I'd be getting – the belt would be coming <laughs> off at that point. You know what I mean? Like – It'd be, it'd be a done deal. No, I mean, like, I can imagine, like, for families, like, I mean, just an Indian family alone, it's like, son, you've got three choices yeah. for what you're doing, all right? You've got three character classes, doctor, engineer, or maybe a lawyer, mm-hmm. all right? Like, that's it. So, you know, I fucking, I did not, well, I did one of them for a little bit, and then I just pretty much stuck to, you know, mm-hmm. this life now. My parents, but, uh, you know, my parents come from uh, Mexico, so I'm, like, first generation. I'm also mm-hmm. the first one in the family to get a to get a college diploma. So, cool. okay. 
uh, I'm glad they trust me uh, to this degree, and they're just not like, well, I guess uh, Larry did all this college stuff for nothing, and it'll, you know, it helped me become a better writer. I think better at speaking and stuff. So I don't think it was all a waste, but it definitely yeah. was a bunch of money to get that degree. So, you know. Well, yeah, at least yeah. you didn't have the conversation of dropping out like I oh. did. <laughs> yeah. Also, I was just you like... know, getting a degree is a better investment than getting a car. So, respect. Sure. Yeah. Having, like, having an education is really important, for sure, like, 100%. It's just also, like, when you get a degree, make sure you also get the degree in something worthwhile, like, something licensed, you know what I mean? Like, like not I philosophy see... or, you know... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like if I went to I went to school to study art history, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So now you're wondering why you're not getting a job out of this. Okay, sure, I get it. I mean, like that that's pretty much like my thing on it. And I'm sure that there's probably some people would be like, well, that's a pretty pedantic way of saying that only some degrees matter. But the harsh reality is, only some really do. But uh, it's good mm-hmm. to just have an education. I think it rounds you out as a better person, dude. Like, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that you're. And go in full time YouTube. Like also, you make it good content, you, a sense of so you, structure, deserve, yeah. you know. Like you yeah. can, you can structure your days better. Uh, I feel like it gives you a sense of responsibility. But I just love how my friend um, Anime Uproar, the YouTube channel that makes anime reviews, he has mm-hmm. a PhD in political philosophy, and he makes anime reviews for a living. Okay, so you know. <laughs> That's Ooh. so wild. It's like having like a PhD in neurochemistry or something, and then they're just making like in cooking videos or some shit. <laughs> like, I have a friend. I literally have a friend who has a PhD in neurochemistry and makes gaming videos. <laughs> what? Yeah, bad Mad ones. What mad pad? <laughs> no, 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 not mad pad. No, not, not even bad ones really. I guess, but just like doesn't really try that. Like, I mean, he'll tell you he doesn't try that. Like, it's just standard gaming shit from like 2016. Oh shit! So he just plays like Happy Wheels and stuff like that. Pretty that's much, so yeah. Sick yeah. though. Great dude, real smart. Well, that that that's uh, that's the that's the one like other side of the wild card I just love so much. Like when you're so overqualified and you come in and it's just like you're doing something so de- like people will take their degrees and come onto YouTube and become like sources of authority. Like I guess the best example is like Doctor Mike. You know what I mean? Like he comes on. I knew you were yeah. going to say that. And yeah. I'm, by the way, that's not a slag against him. I think Doctor Mike is a fine doctor and a content creator. Like he makes some good shit. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I was. I was. God. Yeah. God um, <laughs> yeah. I. I, re- I really yeah, like how a doctor yeah. is uh, promoting partying during a pandemic. By the way, but during any, a yeah. pandemic without a mask when he promotes masks. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> really. Anyway, aside from I, that, I really love that aspect of content creation. Yeah. <laughs> but going back. No, but I, I think agree. Did, did you see like there's this one channel? It's like Jewel Thief reacts to yeah. robberies in video games or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like whatever you did, if you did something wacky, that just gives you a great clickbait title. Okay. You know, when so, is EDP coming back to YouTube to no. do Catch a Predator? What oh. went wrong? No, no, no. I, I don't want to see real pedophile reacts, okay? I don't, I don't want any of that. I don't know, brother. With the way the internet is trending, you might see that at some point. Like, it's fun. Damn. We're joking about it, but I would say, brothers, four years from now, that might actually be a thing. So, you know, who, know, who knows? Although, There's some... I did enjoy, uh, speaking of this type of content, I recently saw... I don't remember who it was. It was one of the one of the lawyer channels, like Legal Eagle or something. Yeah, he did like real lawyer reacts to chicanery from Better Call Saul. <laughs> I think that's all, Legal the Eagle. Battery episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, such a good episode. Oh, that episode's so key now. That oh my god, I love Saul. Perfect, dude. I I love Saul I so much. Well, like, well, uh, okay, how, how many but... how many seasons have you watched on that, uh, Caleb? Or are you just? Uh... Uh, I'm on episode two. <laughs> Oh, he's uh, okay. Done. First episode, first season. Okay. Yeah, I've restarted. Yeah, yeah. no, it's uh, then, then you got you got a while before you get there. But this is like, I think that sh- that whole show, like, pretty much like got perfect on like season three. Like at that point, like mm-hmm. yeah. it, that that's the season that I love the most. On man, watching that show just makes me realize how much better it is than Breaking Bad. Like, to to be fair, Breaking Bad gets you in. Thank Better Call Saul you. keeps you coming in. Like Better Call Saul is just like. If you're Better a fan Call of Saul world building, writing than Breaking Bad, dude, yeah. that's a, that's exciting because I've I've watched Breaking Bad three times this year. Damn, it's don't get so us wrong. Good. Breaking I Bad can, is like uh, amazing, but like Better Call Saul so is like top, like it's, peak. It's because they made such huh. a great world in Breaking Bad that you just want to know more about it, and Better Call Saul just fleshes it out even better. <laughs> to be it, honest, I li- I like the world part to it. Uh, my favorite part personally is when Lalo shows up and says, "It's Lalo time." 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, he is one of the best characters Dude, in the, the entire best show. In the universe. Best, yeah. It's so funny because like you watch Breaking Bad, right? So you know, like that one. You know when they get like Jimmy and they like take him out to the desert and they intimidate him, and he makes uh, that one mention, I know, right? Bro. That like was Jimmy Saul, they take Saul out to the desert. They put a bag over his head, you know, um, Walt and Jesse, and they take him to the desert. They open him up in front of like an open grave, and he's like, "Did Lalo send you? Did Lalo yeah. send you?" Yeah. They took that one character, they oh took one God. sentence, and turned him into a badass character. Like every time he shows up, it's just like, I, I like, I love For seeing me, him because he's the best scene in the so, chicanery is my favorite episode in yeah. the show. My favorite mm-hmm. scene in the show is what happens when they all meet up in their apartment. Like when it's Saul and Kim in their apartment and um, Howard Hamlin shows up and then Lalo shows up. That is yeah. my favorite scene in the whole show. Oh, that is such a good scene yeah. in the entire – yeah. I like how Caleb's but, uh, just like listening just like I I don't know what they're talking about. but No idea. Yeah. To be fair, that He's was trying not we to get talking spoiled. about. Like, Here, I've yeah. got I've I've to take a phone call. I'll be right back. No, no problem. But – <laughs> He just, just like, take a phone call. I thought he just wanted to like leave so we could talk about spoilers. He's talking about building up pink sauce right now. So uh, <laughs> when it comes to Saul, me and a me and a group of friends. So I had uh, four friends fly over: one from Florida, one from New York, one from Kentucky, mm-hmm. and one from Washington. So they could uh, come over and watch the last episode of Better Call Saul with me. And we got That's into some like dedication. Su- yeah, we got into some suits. I bought like two boxes of Cinnabons. And, oh, we had such a good time. Oh, my time. God. You really went all out. Yeah, we walked to the Cinnabon in our suits, and there's this picture on my Twitter. We're just, like, walking in the mall, and I'm, like, trying to, like, straighten my tie. And, like, this is, like, <laughs> you could only do this, like, now. Like, I, I'm living life. This is it, It's good. It's a good life. You know? Is your name Larry, actually? Yeah, my name's actually Larry. So you're living life like Larry. That's what people always, people have said that to me since, like, the second and like third that. grade, and it's it's true. <laughs> fucking that, true, dude. See that—that's how you should live life, man. I really like hearing that kind of shit. Like fucking your boy, like your boys flying out from New York. Like you got to be sitting in Laguardia International, and it's like in a few uh, hours gonna I'm gonna be in LaGuardia sunny California, International, yeah. the worst yeah. airport in the on the planet. Yeah, actually, actually, I will. And the, the best part about the worst LaGuardia. airport ever dude, conceived. Every, every time I connect ever in New York is through that fucking dog shit airport and i always I would take double the price for the ticket if i land in jfk instead of you know you know you know the thing is i did that exact same thing when i was flying back <laughs> i paid like i paid actually like 800 bucks more than for i should have every penny yeah just to land in jfk <laughs> for the connection the connection was only an hour and a half but i was like fuck if i'm landing in Lagardia, hell no, <laughs> no so geez. yeah no way but um yeah, so somebody sits in the airport. They go all the way to California to watch that. That is that is like that is the the last episode of that show. After watching it, that whole story is worth the whole mm-hmm. like flight because that last episode was just so mm, good, thematically perfect, perfect. So what you did. There. I think it also oh. served as like an excellent finale of the entire Breaking Bad universe in itself. Like it felt like everything that's what I've like heard coming together. Yeah, from what yeah. little tiny yeah. little spoilers I've gotten. And what's what's yeah. so good is Breaking Bad is a story about a man who was forced to change, and Better Call Saul is about a man unable to change. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it just it goes through both their lives mm-hmm. and how he'll always be slipping Jimmy, as they say. And, yeah, uh, it's just mm-hmm. such a great show, all of it. Just the last, like the last two three scenes of that fucking episode just got me, man, on mm-hmm. the edge. Like I was just. I loved the finale of that whole show. Like it made it all like it all it made it all worth it getting to the end, man. Like and I and like I said, like two weeks ago, dude, I was burned on shows for a while. Like Ozarks comes out. Yeah. I love that whole show. And then the fucking ending slips in and I'm like, ooh, no, 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 no. Yeah, there's not like, a lot there of great shows out there these days. Yeah, not not that many. And then like, you know, you watch like any I, Game of Thrones. I'm not a fan of that whole show. Like I've never watched it, but every fan i've ever watched for game of thrones has been like yo this last season sucked ass yeah, seven and eight were terrible yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like if you guys know the show house of cards i'm not mm-hmm. the only one that watched it right yeah, i watched I it i watched it the first three through. seasons okay well caleb have you seen the last season of house of cards yeah okay do you try to like ignore that ass point of your life yeah yeah that's pretty much the last season of that yeah. whole show so to understand audience watching house of cards the last season came out at the peak of the Kevin Spacey allegations yeah. when yes, Kevin Spacey was going. That. 
So like Kevin Spacey got like outed for like you know, this was like he was like the largest like cancellation of that whole like Me Too era, and uh, he gets removed. And so like imagine the last season of the entire show. This is again this is like Netflix's first original show, show that they've made. Yeah. yeah, like I remember when it was first announced, even like back in Netflix, they yeah. were pushing it. They were like Netflix original. Like we made House of Cards, and yeah, it was such a, a cool great show. idea. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And was- so like the last season for this show comes out. Now, no disrespect to any of the actors in it. Like, the two lead actors, aside from Kevin Spacey, I think it's, like, Robin Wright. Like, she's she's the uh, she's the wife of him, like, in the show. Great actress. They, they fucked her on the script. They fucking ruined every line that she could have, every scene that she could have ever had. Because the moment that motherfucker got kicked off Netflix, they had to, like, take whatever they had out of the last season, scrap it, redo the entire thing. Yeah. And it came out looking like complete dog shit. To, to be fair, I know everyone was like making fun of Will Smith's apology video for slapping Chris Rock, but no, no, no. The best apology video was Kevin Spacey's apology video in character as the guy from House of Cards. You remember? Oh was it really God, an yeah. apology video? That, like, or was it just him intimidating? So, for some, he's just being weird. He has this, this weird Christmas <laughs> tradition. He did it for like three Christmases in a yeah. like a row, where he just like goes up there and he's playing the he's playing the character from House of Cards. And like it's like creepy. It's it's like after uh, the Me Too stuff, it's just mm-hmm. weird. It's weird. Yeah, he just comes out and like makes these videos as like Frank Underwood, and I'm like, dude, I I don't know if this guy's like a method actor. Like House of Cards, really. You, I, I have to imagine like losing House of Cards and lose. The thing is, man, like you got to imagine like somebody like that has to go mentally insane after losing everything like that. You know, like you spent your whole life building this career up and all yeah. of a sudden in the public spotlight, you're now completely flipped. Like you're instantly vilified. Like that's got to ruin you mentally. Like no, like nobody is that strong to withstand something like that. You know, he did like, unless they're already the villain. He didn't do it last like Christmas. Andrew Tate. Yeah. yeah. He didn't do it last Christmas and it felt kind of empty. I was he was a sad. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just realizes that he can't do it and get away. Or maybe he's just trying not to open up any, like, civil lawsuits or, like, poke bears anymore. Like, he's just out of it. He's like, "Uh uh-uh, not dealing with it. Like, you have to imagine, like, Kevin Spacey was one of the most respected actors before the entire Me Too thing. And then after that, it's like, everyone just, like, as soon as that happened, the first thing I did was I went onto like, the 4chan TV page. And I was just, like, looking at all the threads, and it was just, like, they were just riffing on him, like, Kevin, if you're 12, come back to my placey spacey. Like, they were just naming him like that, you know what I mean? Like, fucked up shit. And it was just, like, at that point, it was spreading to other social medias, like Twitter, Facebook, and, like, within 24, 48 hours, it's, like... It was over. Whatever image you had of the man, gone. And then, like, the lawsuits come in, and it's, like, even if you win lawsuits regarding these things, Doesn't right? Matter. Your name's smeared for good, there's no... There's yeah, no doesn't back. matter. I mean, there's still people after the whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard shit that are still like, you'll still see like the remnants of that kicking off on social media. It's like justice for Amber, justice for Johnny. It's like on the internet, if you've been smeared once, if you've been like shit on once, it'll carry with you to the rest of eternity. There are people who will live their entire life never letting you forget. And in some cases, it's good that they never let you forget. Like in Kevin Spacey's case, hopefully he never comes back. The guy's a scumbag. So, you know, glad to, you know, good riddance, if you will. But that's just the internet in general, man. And I'm glad when it came to the whole Kevin, like, uh, Johnny fucking Depp shit, I was completely out of it, dude. I had no take to ever give on that. I'm like, I don't even understand half the case to begin with. I was like... Watch Asmongold. <laughs> that's a lot of videos to cover. I was pissed off. No. Because, uh... Oh, wait, no, continue? No, no, you can, you yeah. can continue. I was pissed off because I have a Disneyland annual pass. And during the mm-hmm. entire, like, uh, trial... Uh, they closed the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and I'm just like, dude, I just want to go on Pirates. It's a hot day. Are out you a here. Disney adult? Uh, I would like to say I'm not, but I go like twice a week, so probably. Unfortunately, what? twice a week. Dude, I it's love pretty Disney. common. I love though. it, dude. Dude, that I can't hate that, man. It's pretty common, like, uh, dude, banger video yeah. idea. Go on every single ride in Disneyland in a in a single day. Banger video idea. I think someone already yeah, did that. Like, uh, someone released a oh, video yeah. about that like three or four days ago. I think his name's like Alpha Red, Alpha Red or whatever. Alpha Red did that? No. Alpha Red? Going on yeah. every day. Yo, we, we could do that. Let's do Six Flags, bro. Let's go there right in the morning. I had a dream just... about Six Flags recently. Dude, Alpha Red did that six days ago. I rode every Disneyland ride in one day. Goddamn. He, well, he I mean, if we're going to go to Alpha, if, 
Oh, Alpha Red makes really good shit. Mm. Caleb, I was just gonna say, if we go to Six Flags, you might have to invest in Kevlar vest because uh, Six Flags is a bit dangerous these days. Last I checked. Oh, oh yeah, that's why I had a, I had a uh, dream about it that I bought one and I was regretting it. <laughs> you bought a Six yeah. Flags? Weird dream. I'm like, it was like Six Flags too. Like it was there was actually Six Flags, but it was like Dude, an amusement park. I would. How much would how much would that even cost in buying one? I don't know. Cost yeah, me four hundred eighty thousand dollars in your dream to buy one. In my dream, yeah. That, that's how you know you're in a fucking dream with the property prices. Yeah, these yeah days. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you're like a Shit. corner lot costs fucking two million dollars in the smallest city in my whole county. Yeah, I was looking at a uh, real estate out in Texas because I'm thinking of like moving and shit, and it's just whew. even Texas get, even Texas is getting pricey. Though, Dude, dude it's getting crazy. So I did find some fucking banger houses in like mobile alabama so i might consider oh, moving yeah. to bama dude, dude yeah, I, to i've bama, thought bro. about moving before and i know the taxes here in california and like you know real estate here is like terrible but like there's no other place i'd want to be and like be like 20 minutes away from disneyland so i could ride like the teacups ride it's all worth it it's all worth it for the for mr toad's wild ride it's all worth it for that ride See, that's what that, it's all that, about. See, that, that's exactly why people are willing to pay up the ass to live in places like that. Because it's like, if you want to be around, you know, things that are... If you want to be around a lot of things, be prepared to pay that price. Like, I'm saying Mobile, Alabama. If I move to Mobile, Alabama, trust me, I'm not going to have shit to do but country kitchen buffet in the fucking morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Dude, and I don't know. I just truck. need internet, bro. I, I would hate to yeah. live in California. That's oh, why God. when VidCon happened this past year, like, everyone was flying over. I'm like, cool. I just need to like drive like 15 minutes to get to said location for my house. Dude, I'm happy living where I'm at, dude. I got my computer, I got my internet, I got my house. And then I got like a big ass forest behind me to just walk around after every day of working. I can just go into nature, touch grass, and then I can come home. Like I, I feel like most people that we talk to on this podcast, everyone is very low maintenance. Actually, most YouTubers that I've talked to are like super low maintenance type of people. You know, it's like as long as you have your money for food, and your computer and like your internet DoorDash. that's all yeah that's all they care well doordash but i'm saying that cooking should be a habit that people develop because you know come on now you can't be did you fuck doordash dude just the last three fucking months alone at least every week there was in one order same place and the guy just keeps delivering it to the wrong address you know how many that fucking... happens a lot to me dude it's like how hard i don't i'm about to almost dox myself by screwing on my address but like how hard is it to fucking like just put it in a gps and get to my fucking zero one negro royale yeah. lane yeah. double country new mexico yeah here we go oh dude I, I i saw photos of that place now and apparently like the lady that lives around there is just like a fucking super territorial yeah, <laughs> yeah. she has a seat she sits out and said if you want to take a picture you can suck my dick you know she's what? crazy i feel like we should go there and like if she says that we're like bitch it's public property we can take any photo we want we're on it's the streets historical yeah there was a meth empire in this area yeah, baby. Bitch. <laughs> don't you know walter white <laughs> yeah no. walter. Bitch. walter yeah i walter. i, I walter, dude i you did go here walter i can't believe I like fucking you again walter <laughs> you got <laughs> away walter God, I, I love Mike, dude. He's like, when I first saw him in like the episodes, I'm like, this guy's got that dead fish eye, like kill you stare down to a T. But then like, surprisingly, he's like the wholesome grandpa at the same time. So I'm like, what a range of acting this character has, mm -hmm. dude. Solid dude, man. And I don't know. They, they also write like really terrifying villains like Gus, bro. That man. Whoo, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 into your soul. Also, the, the ending of Breaking Bad, dude, is so good. It is. Mm hmm. It's fucking crazy. I've seen the what, what is the on whether or not what? Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad's ending is better. And uh, thinking about I think it, they're both great. I think in their they're own both ways. pretty good. I think Breaking Bad yeah. edges is out. They all feed into each other. You know, it's yeah. like if you're gonna watch those shows, you have to watch. Is if you're gonna watch Better Call Saul, you have to watch Breaking Bad. If you're gonna watch, like for me, it's like you watch um, Better Call Saul first, then Breaking Bad. And then just watch the El Camino movie. That's what my rewatch order is going to be from now on. Mm -hmm. You know, just true. However, I would say watch Better Call Saul until you know season six, episode, episode nine, nine of yeah. season six, and then watch Breaking Bad, and then watch the last three episodes of Better Call Saul or whatever. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, and that makes that sense. Would be Perfect. Much, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's pretty much like and where i stand on it dude oh, this is such a good show dude there's not too many shows that come out like that anymore every show that comes out like burns me like dude resident evil i didn't even like 
before anybody like jokes on it, I actually, I actually go, was excited. That's, that's your go-to great show of the new era. Resident I was, Evil. I was a little excited for the Resident Evil show personally. I'm a Resident Evil fan. I was like, damn, this kind of looks cool. And then they showed Wesker, and then they showed the storyline, and then I watched the whole show, and then I. You know, and then I realized, man, I hate modern day television. I really do. I really can't stand modern TV or movies. So really, like, I, I, a really critically acclaimed show that just came out on Netflix, Sandman. Any of you seen it? No. It's like uh, I saw the first episode and I just lost interest immediately. But I'm going to try to watch it again. So Sandman. it's like, I it's so sad that this is considered like critically acclaimed <laughs> today. Like there are two episodes in Sandman that I think were really good, but the rest mm-hmm. of the show was so bad. Like the acting is so bad. I don't understand. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, first off, and, I and never dude, consider. How could the main character be such an edge lord? Okay. Oh my well, god. Nox, I don't consider any acting bad because last night I watched a movie. I watched one of the worst movies of all time. Is it Deaf Noodles comedy show? No, it's not. A, no, it's not a movie. That's a national tragedy. But I watched an actual movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys remember the movie Catwoman? Yeah. 2003, yes. I decided to go back and watch it. Oh, I was like, Kelly Berry? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I do know that. So, like, so I, I, f- I, found, I found it on the internet, and, you know, I, I bought it. Yeah, I, I bought the fucking movie. Don't worry about it. But I, <laughs> I set it up. I decided to go give it a watch. And, dude, every single part of that movie is – I feel like that movie is physically engineered to be as shit as possible. Like – you know when you, you know when you watch the intro credits for like a superhero movie and they're just it's just like fucking stills floating around, dude. Even that's mm. generic and bad as hell. How is it? I, I feel I feel like they had blackmail on Halle Berry. Like Halle Berry must have been on like Epstein's Island or some shit, and they had like the black box footage of it. I don't fucking know. But why someone would agree to do that script is beyond me. Like either she got paid up the ass or they had blackmail. Because like every time, I feel like she's that's a, a question for Jared Leto. Tucci. Yeah. Yeah, it's a question for Jared Leto. But then again, Jared Leto also ran a cult, so it's like, I mean, can you really... I take him... it back. <laughs> can you really take him as a state? Like, no, actually, no, it's not even bad for Jared Leto, because Morbius wasn't a totally awful movie. I've seen Morbius at least four times, okay? No, you it's haven't. not the word I have. I have seen no, it. No, you haven't. I have seen it. It was on Twitch, dude, streaming back to back. I was working on a big video project and I just had it running on the side. And I was I was so into this project that I couldn't switch to the other monitor and just turn it off. So I watched all of Morbius. I know the entire lore of it. Like of, of Mor- well, this- I, I know Morbin time. That is not as My bad as Catwoman. My favorite part of the movie was when Morbius said it's Morbin time and then proceeded to morb all over everyone. <laughs> Oh, my favorite part yet? was when they took their is all their clothes yet? off and had sex. My favorite oh. part was when, like, oh, dude, dude, you you say that? See, that's like that's like you put you sprinkled a little little nugget of truth into what you just said, Caleb. They did not have sex. I remember the scene where he prepares with the song that says "Have." That's sex. the only scene I've ever seen from that movie. The the, <laughs> the, the have sex just he's like doing push ups. It's like Matt Smith, yeah. like. It's that awesome. made me watch the movie. That scene was so outlandish. <laughs> that scene's awesome. Because when I saw it on YouTube, I'm like, oh, dude, somebody really deep. Like, the memes are getting too good. And then I and, uh, well, I found the movie on Twitch, and we got to that scene. Oh, dude, I, I was, like, flabbergasted as soon as that came on. I'm like, no fucking way. I thought it was edited at first when I first saw that scene. But no, yeah. it's real. It's legit. Yeah. It's so no, brilliant. I th- I think Matt just like he was like he looked at the script. He's like, "Oh, we're filming this today. Sure, let's let's go. I guess <laughs> let's bring it our all." <laughs> but uh, Morbius is not as bad as Catwoman, and you know what? Even Jared Leto's Joker isn't as bad as fucking Catwoman. Like Jared Leto, listen, Nux. Jared Leto gets a lot of shit for his Joker performance, but like, what are you gonna do when the when the script says <laughs> I can rip down Gotham in my Lamborghini as Har- Harley Quinn? <laughs> Dude, he was he was acting like a dick to the other actors, method acting, like he was yeah. pranking them and like stealing their underwear. Method acting as the Joker. Okay. Yeah. Listen, Dude, when the when he, the script he straight up he, he was impressive enough to be the worst villain in any DC show and went on to be the worst villain in any Marvel show. That's pretty impressive. You know who, you know who should play the Joker now is Ezra Miller. Not Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, yeah, dude. Ezra, dude. Yes, and it's a documentary. Favorite, dude, my favorite video the last two months has been Oompy's, like, 
fucking Ezra Miller video. Dude, he's crazy. I didn't even know all of the body cam footage. Like, you were showing that shit, and I'm Bruh. like... <laughs> like There's, he's been arrested so... Or, sorry, they've been arrested so many fucking times that it's insane. Yeah. I, and I said they in the video, too. And I got more flack for saying they and being respectful than I did for... for for, I've I've got more flack for that video than anything, uh, dude. I'm I, I, when I saw your video, I'm like I'm looking at it. I'm like, damn. And this guy, they're still on the they're still on the DC payroll. They're still doing flash. Crazy. <laughs> I I heard that he was getting arrested in between filming sessions for the movies. Oh yeah, for just beating the shit out of people. Could could you imagine like on the call sheet, you're like, where's Ezra today? Has somebody posted bail? We need oh, him here God. to fi- we need them here to film the scenes. <laughs> Remember like, that Christ. time when you were with your girlfriend and I just beat the crap out of you? That was me, Larry. <laughs> Dude, he was in Hawaii. I'm oh, sorry, they were in Hawaii. And I was just like, like when I saw the Hawaii stuff, like the chairs being thrown, I'm like, this can't be real. This can't, what kind of what kind of coke has this has this person been given to to cause this? And then, but I've heard he's not filming anymore. I heard they I've heard they've kicked uh, Ezra out completely. They like he like they're removed. Out of the whole like DC stuff, is that true? Um, yeah, th- there's. Uh, I think his most recent one uh, got him in enough trouble to to kind of irreparably damage the future of Flash. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that that's the word on the street right now. But obviously things change, and Ezra is a fucking crazy oh, motherfucker. No. So no more Flash. What are we gonna no do? No more Flash. Well, not Ezra Miller Flash at least. Yeah, they'll, Dude, they'll f- probably get f- a new person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some other little little white boy. Well, they'll, they'll just recast uh, Ezra like they did like the Incredible Hulk on the Marvel stuff. Even though, like for me personally, considering Incredible Hulk was the most boring shit, I've seen the new She Hulk by the way, which um, is not the best show to exist. Personally, are you um, just sexist? Is that the problem? Well, no, I'm against bad uh, choreography. Mm. No way. <laughs> she looks nah. like a lawyer. Caleb, right? Get along so well. Yeah, she's that's a lo- why I mean you hit it off so good. Yeah. She, yeah she, she, listen, she's a lawyer. Okay. All right. You know, it's fine and dandy, but like, there are some scenes where she's like fighting, and like the way they give line deliveries, it's like I don't know if it's just Disney Plus as a whole, <laughs> but like, damn, there's just no quality standard anymore over there. They're just like fucking. <laughs> Like, we'll just upload whatever we feel like and call it a day. We own Marvel, might as well. It's not like you're unsubbing anytime soon. We own all your childhood, so let's go, I guess. But I've personally found the Hulk to be the most boring character. It's like, what, you just get mad and, like, break shit? Is that, is that your thing? Yeah. Didn't it's he like... become a therapist in, like, the later Marvel movies? Like, he became a th- I saw a clip of him sitting there, like, as a therapist and saying, the trick is to control your anger. Like, and he's talking to, like... No, dude, he was, like, on melatonin half the last, like, (laughs) end game. (laughs) He was was smoking the good shit. That's what what Hulk was up to. But, uh... You know what really helps me control my anger? (coughs) Weed. Yes, kids. It helps. (laughs) Weed is bad. All drugs are bad. bad. Don't ever do do drugs. Mm -mm, None of that. Except for meth. No, don't never meth. Meth is a schedule four substance. Never do it. Breaking like, Bad, though. Yeah, Breaking Bad is cool. So, like, why is yeah, it What about Breaking Bad, though, man? The blue ice. Come on, Chili P. Dude, could you imagine how much it hurts to snort Chili P, though? <laughs> like, the dude had Chili P put into his yeah. meth, and, like, Tuco's breaking it with the Bowie knife. I'm like, you know how much that shit hurts to just snort straight chili powder? Like, I don't know. As a kid, I snorted pepper <laughs> once, and it was this not good. And made a rock. And threw it at the ground and it exploded, okay? That's not <laughs> science. There's no science to that, please. Give me I, I, so yeah, that's where the science gets me, because I don't know if that's even possible to do. But I think yeah. the thing that... Science, bitch! The thing that always the gets me is the methylamine shit. I'm like, wait a minute, wouldn't it have been easier for them to just manufacture this themselves? Why did they have to haul, or rob a whole tank, train of this? There are, a couple, like, th- yeah, there, there are a couple things in the Breaking Bad universe where I'm just like, it's it's like probably not possible, but it's still like awesome. Like yeah. without spoiling too much, in at the end of mm-hmm. season four, a better call saw Lalo Guitar jumps in, over. No, oh, it's like dude. Lalo jumps into like uh, the a ceiling or whatever, and yeah. like it's like a five second like. How is someone able to hop that high and then just easily traverse 
and like jump down. Well, I mean, like bad. he's like a cartel dude, so he's gonna have some acumen, so. like physical dude, he's stuff. Not you know, just a cartel dude. That guy is a ninja. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, if he's dude. He, what? What if like they need to make a backstory of him? Maybe he went to Japan. Maybe he got like ninja training. You never know that. I would watch a Lalo spinoff. I think that would be tight. That would be like the best like spinoff too, like the Salamancas. Yeah. <laughs> just Better watching them be a Lalo gamers. <laughs> It's coming out soon. I wonder Dude, how hard it would have been to make for them to make methylamine. I don't know. I mean, methanol like, don't Google and, it, Caleb. Don't Google what is it? it? Methanol and ammonia, maybe. He's ammonia. already he's already on a watch list. He's fucked. Meth- so. uh, I mean, no, there's methylamine. a so he's just using the cult's Wi-Fi right now. Don't pay <laughs> <laughs> cult needs to up its profits and add a new product into the repertoire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nutrition yeah, bars aren't doing anything. Methylamine. I mean. Yeah, it is. It's a yeah. It's a methyl ammonia. So it's a me- it's it, yeah. It's like what I said, but I don't know what. I don't know how you'd make it though. Well, I don't. Uh, the yeah, way that bitch. yeah, like honestly, there's some chemistry on the show, and I'm not a chemist by any imagination, but I could I could I feel like a lot of it was done for like plot like sake. You know what I mean? Like just for you know making yeah. a plot or whatever go. Mm. So that's why I think that's why he like made Vince rice did it. in like in four seconds. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> they made it look like ricin was such an easily like possible. Like, well, ricin, all I need is an apple and a toothpick, and I can make ricin, no problem. Yeah, he's yeah. like the MacGyver of like dangerous chemicals that can cause people to like be gone. But I mean, like at the same time, like it's not totally unrealistic, right? Like I remember, remember yeah, in yeah. Ozarks, how she like poisoned the fucking husband with the cherry pits. I didn't even yeah. know that cherry pits had like cyanide in them until that episode. Yes. Yeah, but still, like that's that's over. They don't, they don't have enough months. to actually hurt you. Yeah, well, th- well, that's what you took like can 15, 20 of them to like grind them in a mortar pestle yeah, yeah, yeah. just to put them in. Yeah, you uh, probably still need to have some kind of like some kind of like solvent to be able to even make it that uh, Caleb, like viable. Don't try it for a video. Don't try it for. A video. I've already done it. I've already made hydrogen cyanide. How do you? How are you like not removed, man? How's like the. How are the alphabet agencies not busting down your door every other week? I already made hydrogen cyanide. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you just combine you combine uh, uh, bitter almonds and and uh, sulfuric acid. It's like you can buy them on Amazon. It's just like a little fun experiment. It smells like almonds, like really strongly like almonds. Yeah, except it has a possibility of you know killing you. <laughs> not in a well ventilated area. Not in a well ventilated. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You literally, dude, you just made a video showing how to make chemical. P- in the- what the fuck? That's so great. I, I, I love, I love that experiment. Like he, but like Caleb's completely right. Like all these ingredients are available. So like, yeah, like separately. So it's like you know, if you had like basic <laughs> chemical understanding, you could turn some pretty spooky shit. Like the whole ricin thing, right? Like he had the castor beans, and he like you know turned that into ricin. And, uh, you know, he wasn't wrong. Like, I asked my dad about the ricin thing. And my dad's like, first off, my dad freaked out. The f- He freaked the fuck out when I asked him about ricin. He's like, why would you ask me about that? Why would you even mention that? And I'm like, dad, how dangerous is it? I'm like, it'll kill you. I'm like, how much will kill you? It's like, just a teeny tiny bit will kill you. I'm like, dad, how much is it? It's like, it doesn't matter your dosage. You're dead. Like, gone. He's like, can you survive it? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> if you're lucky. And you come in quick, sure. Yes, yeah, dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah, because you it's gave like me hydrogen the... cyanide, but not in a well well ventilated area, apparently. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. did this but outside I... your house, like obviously, like. No, I just did it in my room with a window open. That's not a well ventilated <laughs> area. I, I'm just kidding. I did it outside. <laughs> I did it outside. Yeah. I'm like if you did it in your room, brother, Jesus Christ! Yeah. It's not illegal. Uh, Nile Red has a video making it. Dude, Nile Red makes so much He's fucking awesome. good shit on it. Like yeah. his. Have you seen Niles Red, uh, Nox, and uh, no, Larry? No, I haven't. I've have not. He's great. So YouTube Shorts, that's his game. Like, he, yeah. th- that's his turf. He dominates YouTube Shorts. Um, I knew him because one night I got kind of wasted with friends and I was just on YouTube and Niles Red showed up and he basically makes content that's... All- oh, God, what the... Ew. What? Oh, that's so fucking gross. I just got a tweet liked by a douchebag. By a bussy? No. A bussy tweet? Do you guys know who Romeo Lacoste is? Yeah. The, yeah. The, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The, the, uh, oh. the, anti- the antithesis to Keemstar? Yeah, that's ew. He just like liked it. Too. Oh, dude. What, what was the tweet? 
banning Andrew Tate is dumb. Ideas should be challenged. Oh. And if he's spray- yeah, of course he liked that. Of course one. that's that. Yeah, that's the tweet he likes. <laughs> of course, that's of course, the tweet. You've, been, he's you've, you've probably been seeing a few dudes like that, like in that tweet, eh? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Th- no, yeah. This, this is the one that immediately like hit me because Romeo Lacoste. For anybody who doesn't know, he's like the. Actually, wait. Who can give the better story on this? Who knows it? Like, because I feel like I'd be missing a few things. I'm definitely missing a lot. Okay. All cool. I know is that Keemstar got his play button. Yeah, this is something we need Keemstar yeah, did, for. Cause... I'm pretty. Didn't he get like a lot of allegations for like grooming and stuff? Yeah, one, one of the one of those types, effectively. So, yeah, to see his name again is kind of insane. He sued Keemstar and lost. I think Def Noodles is actually suing Keemstar too. Keem's just out here collecting play buttons collecting off all these play people. Buttons is trophies. <laughs> Yeah, could you imagine being in like a law, lo- like a lawsuit, like in a courtroom, and like that's your fucking, that that's your that that's what you're taking at the end. It's like fuck the money. I want, I want your, I want your allocates. That's kind of base, though. I do like that. Just like, I mean, just I taking it. The only the person button. I know that's following Romeo Lacoste is Gamer from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Art, dude, Art's just keeping tabs on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is like to be honest this is like an edp like the tweet or something i'm like yeah no Ew. oh that is so that is that is that is gross it's like fucking if it's like if it's like if a minecraft youtuber just suddenly jumped in and liked the tweet dude you know well it depends on the minecraft youtuber to be fair well yeah there's two types of minecraft youtubers one that goes into like music careers or ones that you know yeah, but, yeah the you, other know, t- you know <laughs> Oh god! Or they take the cupcake path. Yeah, the cupcake route or shitty music route. You know, mm. one or the other. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what the point of the mask is. <laughs> no, dude, we love Dream on this. I love Dream ever since the speed running stuff. Because like, when that speed running shit broke down, he provided the most like laughable shit that I've ever seen. Which is True. the you know. True. The... Isn't it nice to have drama that doesn't involve like yeah sexism. Yeah, or, he was like, let me know, just, get, let me get, it's yeah, let me so get us, nice. he's like, let me just get, let me hire a Harvard, you know, fucking physicist, and, and yep. we'll get down to the truth of the matter. <laughs> it's not Definitely not the worst thing a Minecraft uh, YouTuber could have gone into, like, hot water for, so. Bro. I just, Bro. Uh, wait, did we, we didn't know the name of the Harvard physicist, right? He, he no, he didn't want to tell yeah. us. Yeah, so could it's you imagine. Anonymous, anonymous, anonymous astrophysicist. Could you imagine, like, going to, like, Harvard, Neil becoming... Neil Tyson. <laughs> yeah, it was Neil. Could you imagine going there, making... No, if it was Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know Neil would be fucking blowing oh, that yeah. up. He'd be fucking talking oh, about yeah. it all day. I disproved the Minecraft speed. <laughs> like, he'd be fucking telling the world about that. But imagine going to Harvard, right? And you be- you become that intelligent. You You graduate like that. And then, like, you get a call one day. I assume a lot of money is offered to, to do this. And uh, you were asked to debunk Minecraft statistics. So now, as a Harvard physicist, you have to sit there analyzing Minecraft fucking probabilities just to disprove a speed run. Like, imagine being hit with all that at once. So that is, that's got to be something. You know, it's like the meme with, like, you have the one excited person saying, like, the really nerd shit. Like, yeah, and I was trading with the goblins and, with, like, you made different trades with different... And then you have, like, yes, babe. You know, like, on the other side. Have you ever uh, considered making a video on that, Z? Like, a, a little more deep dive onto the Minecraft speedrunning uh, drama? That's, I think that, speedrunning drama is crazy fun. That's the thing. Like, I feel like uh, within the past few months, I've opened up, like, a, a giant can of worms that I could just really talk about, like, a series of multiple things people might find, like, you know, somewhat mm-hmm. just, like, twisted or, like, just, like, oh, that's kind of funny. So it's basically, like, you guys are giving me video ideas, and I, I've been low-key writing them down on, like, my notes, like, on my iPhone, just like, oh, that's pretty good. Like, writing it in, so... Well, I'm going to give one idea that you're not allowed to steal because I'm working on this video, actually. I mean, do it if you want. I don't care. Um, it's actually the biggest YouTube drama that you've never heard of. So how I want to ask you, how like when did you first get into YouTube? Like, When was your first time getting into the video stuff here? Uh, 2016. So you don't really know much about YouTube culture, gaming culture before that, right? Uh, I do a, a bit. A bit. Do you know uh, about modern warfare culture? Like Call of Duty mm, culture? No, I was never in that sphere. No. What if I told you that a person lost their entire YouTube career because they faked a nuke on Modern Warfare 2? 
What? They so you know the that game back, back when drama was fun, gamers. So back in the days of Modern Warfare Two, there used to be YouTubers. That so back in MW Two, right? Like Call of Duty, you know what a kill streak in Call of Duty is, right? You get three kills, they let yeah. you like fire off a little ability. So in Modern Warfare Two, if you got twenty five kills in a row, twenty four plus one if you were a little bitch running hardline, but twenty five kills in a row you would actually unlock a nuke ability. Now, a nuke could shut the entire game down and make you win. Your team would win. So imagine, like, if your team is desperately losing and you're the only god-tier player, you get 25 kills, you just shut down the game and win, right? Like, ultimate troll move, get the fuck out of here. So it used to be a thing where, like, people were fighting for world records on this. So there were plenty of YouTubers that stand to gain a lot of attention in the sphere. And by a lot yeah, of this attention... This the original speedrunning drama. Yeah. So, like, in the original thing, this one YouTuber, G-Unit, right? And his team... One, two, three. Yeah, G-Unit, one, two, three. I remember him. And his team... You guys to say that he is a top G? A top... The OG, brother. Not just the top G. The <laughs> OG. <laughs> So this man and his team <laughs> orchestrated a nuke in the game. And for a while, people thought it was realistic until the other Call of Duty channels stopped when, when, the, when the weed ran out. They, they looked at it like, no, 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 no. They proved, systematically breaks this down. And then the entire career, it was the biggest, like, fucking vilification. Like, nowadays, if you do that, people will be like, oh, whatever. Somebody faked something for content on yeah. the internet. Who gives a shit? Back then, they were like... <sighs> lying on the internet <laughs> about no. your video game no way this can't happen L last i checked the united nations just passed a resolution that doesn't allow you to do that what the yep <laughs> so they True. basically dog filed and like this guy's career got fucking straight removed for now what is effectively a harmless little world record in a video game you know so that was that that was like what that was what youtube was like back then now every time drama happens it's just allegations of yeah misogyny racism yeah like speaking really of racism did you see my my uh my um drama that i got in a couple days ago muda wait what happened what happened with you well growing up in virginia um i'm not i'm a little ignorant when it comes to some stuff right especially okay. on what terms are considered racist oh god all right okay and uh so apparently my the guy that makes my thumbnails as well he also is a little ignorant on which ter which terms are racist. So I did a there was a video in which I looked at this thing and it was a little baby covered in in like uh, what looked like tar, right? Like okay. uh, God. asphalt tar. Okay. Turns out that when you combine the word tar and the word baby, it's a racial slur. Ah, uh, what? I didn't know that. I didn't uh, know that either. What? I didn't know that. And I, I, I'm uh, like combining I, it together, and I can I, I assume it's uh, it's a slur for black children. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Uh, African okay. American people, uh, black people, and yeah. uh, I believe uh, the the Maori people as well. The Pacific Pacific Islanders. Okay. Um. So it's very racist. It's also from an old Disney movie as well. And uh, back when Disney was racist as fuck. And I put a uh, little little baby that was covered in tar in my thumbnail, and that well, I didn't do it. My my, but he showed it to me first before we uploaded it, and I was like, yeah, that looks awesome. That looks funny. A little funny words on there, mm. and just a little yellow arrow with a little couple words. One that was tar, mm -hmm. and then I'll give it enough time between me saying tar and the other word baby <laughs> together, so that so YouTube doesn't think where I'm saying just slurs, and uh, and it was apparently not cool. But a lot of people didn't know, and I didn't. Dude, I, I didn't, certainly I didn't, know didn't that know. I never heard yeah. that. Before. Yeah, but, yeah, but that I mean, is it's a good very to learn. Yeah. Term. It's good to learn about it. Yeah, after I, I know, mean, like... I feel so stupid though. I literally put like a racial slur. Yeah. In my thumbnail. <laughs> I imagine you changed the thumbnail, right? Yeah. Oh no, it's still up. <laughs> obviously, I'm just kidding. No, I changed it. Yeah. I changed it immediately. <laughs> You, so you, you, became, you became PewDiePie Steven Crowder for got a day. Rid of that deaf girl. God damn. I started getting the fucking sweats, and then I was like, "Uh, f I this is like because it, you it's a slur. Like I, it's a strike. That's a a, a strike on YouTube. Yeah. If you just put the heart like the hard R N word in your t thumbnail, you're gonna get a strike, especially if you're a white dude from Virginia. So, yeah, I'm not just casually tossing around racial slurs. Did people just add you on like? At you on like Twitter, like why are you racist? Or yeah, yeah, I, I read the comments too, and someone was like, you know, that's a racist, racist term, and I just totally ignored it. And then I saw like a couple more, and I was like, oh, you're like, that's what uh, they, that's what they mean. Yeah, like, and oh, then I just no. changed it immediately, and then I tweeted it because I was like, I'm gonna own up to this, so people don't think that I'm like 
you know, just trying to, because yeah. you know, I think it, it is funny because I'm like just completely accidentally <laughs> racist. <laughs> Yeah, you have like an the accidental rare, racist moment. Yeah, the very rare innocent racist. Very rare. Well, I, I don't know if it's like, you can't even say racist. It's more like completely ignorant to the situation, right? Like, yeah, I, totally ignorant to what yeah. a racial what racial slurs are which and which ones you're... Uh, well, owning up to it makes, like owning up to it, there's a lot of racial slurs that people don't know, you know? Like, obviously we know like the, the, the major ones for like most races, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. you can't, you know, you can't say the N word, you know, when it comes to Mexican people, you can't say the B word, right? Like, obviously, there's racial slurs that we all know. But it, it's interesting, because I feel like more people are knowledgeable on that, depending on where they live. Obviously, if you're from Virginia, it probably doesn't come up. But it's like, when it comes to like, people from other sides of the world, right, like homogenized countries, if you will, where like, they don't really see a lot of different races like this. For them, they have no knowledge of this concept, right? Like, Mm -hmm. we're only really attuned to it because we're connected and constantly involving ourselves with other people all over. So we we know about all this. But we can't be expected to know everything, you know? Yeah, I do want to say that I I have – I don't know if this term is racist. I just Googled it and it's not apparently or there's nothing, like, obvious. Mud Mm -hmm. baby, okay, which is very similar to the other one. Um, But apparently there's no racist footprint on that one. I have a cow. I have, like, ten cattle and one of them is named Mud baby. So, um, hopefully that's not racist. I'm just going to go out and say that if it is, I apologize, and I will now call that cow baby or mud. Yeah, one. Well, yeah, yeah, it's it's the, 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 it's it's interesting. Very like, brave. it's good to like learn about it too, right? Like, it's one thing. Like, it's one thing if you just change the thumbnail and like done it and not owned up to it. This is the weird yeah. thing I find about the internet, right? Like, if you own up to something, there's going to be people that hang it over your head. Oh, you're just apologizing for apology sake, and it's like you know you like yeah i made a fuck up i'll load up to it all right like if you're gonna hang it over my head yeah that just shows me like how much of a little bitch you are okay like people yeah, change, i, I people legitimately learn. feel sorry yeah. like i feel like i shouldn't have done that yeah like it was, you know, uh, it, it was an honest mistake it happens yeah. really yeah it was truly an it's honest like mistake whoever actually tries to pronounce the street name that walter white lives on i wouldn't say it but you know yeah right like oh th- that's what, the other thing too right like, <laughs> negra <laughs> <laughs> Negro Royale. Uh oh. <laughs> I wouldn't Isn't that say it? that. It, it Wait, is, what? but I wouldn't say it. I'm so <laughs> ignorant. Well, well, that's Come the on, thing I can with say like the street name. That's the thing with the languages too. Yeah, it's like, okay, I, if that was yeah. such an offensive I thing, love, right? Like, it means black, right? Yeah. 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 Spanish, right? And the whole the whole joke is that you know Walter White. And he yeah, lives, lives on, on Negro Royal Lane, right? Creek. Yeah. Like ne- yeah, Negro Royal. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, okay, well, if that's going to be a problem, where the fuck one. does my GPS keep saying that to? You think I haven't routed to a street like that and it hasn't fucking... You think my you think Google suddenly... Ra- the Google AI went racist on me because it started fucking saying the whole thing out? <laughs> when, when Google Maps starts saying, turn right on bad yeah. lane. What's well, the uh, craziest yeah. street name you guys have ever seen? There's a there's a, a street in LA that I drive by every now and then called Obama Boulevard. And I just start laughing because it's just Obama. Like I, that is pretty funny. There's a I, I remember distinctly. There's a street in Chicago, right, where like the Indian population lives, right. And I think it's a turf battle because every time I go to Chicago, that street name changes to like some other different Indian person. So it could be like Gandhi Street. It could be like fucking you know Muhammad Jinnah Street or some shit like that. It just keeps <laughs> changing to like every different person all the time. And like I'm just like. Huh. Are they are they just sharing one street in the city of Chicago between each other? Like what the fuck? I wonder if, two, if we're gonna get two like, weird ones. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I wonder if we're gonna get like a Trump street or like Biden like no. uh, Biden for sure. Biden street, yeah. Biden well, shark. Well, Trump's got a whole building, man. He's got like tr- Trump towers yeah, he, yeah. and all that shit. Oh, yeah. private right, right, though. Yeah. yeah. He wants a public road named after him. George Bush. George Bush Turnpike that, here in Texas. In Virginia, there is Moomaw. We had Moomaw Street and then uh, Bung Shit. What? That's a good one. Yeah. Right? And Gun Barrel. Gun Barrel Lane. Oh, my God, dude. I would buy a house on Gun Barrel Lane. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. That's That'd a cool f- fucking address. Well, how, what kind of streets did you find that were weird in Montreal? All the Frenchy ones? There are a couple of French ones, you know. Um, so for La me, Coum. I... Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's just the GPS, whenever it speaks, like it's English, and it just pronounces all the street names really wrong <laughs> like so badly you have no idea what street it's talking about when it tells you to turn on lamentagon 
is Lamontagne, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they pronounce it as Lamontagne. Yeah. It's I, like, oh, I don't God, speak... Like, I don't speak much French, but when I was driving in Montreal, my GPS did the same. I'm like, that's not right at all. <laughs> that's not even close yeah, to right. Oh, God, it's so bad. Even the French voice fucks it up, too, because they oh, still use And it's so funny English also, like, when it tries to tell you, because a lot of streets have, like, uh, you know, north, south, east, west, like, on the highways. Yeah. Right? And in French, north is no. N-O-R-D, and the D is silent, because French is the worst language on the planet, and all the... <laughs> consonants at the ends of the words are all silent for some reason they just add them to annoy people right but the yeah. gps will say turn on nord like it'll pronounce all the consonants that are not supposed to be pronounced or <laughs> west in french is o-u-e-s-t ouest that's yeah. how it's written in french but the gps will say turn oust and you have <laughs> no idea what it's talking about it's like what so, yeah that's that's what that's what I love about foreign countries and foreign GPS foreign systems. countries like Montreal, right? Muna? Yeah, for, <laughs> foreign well, countries. I'm talking French. Look, listen, Montreal. Even the French hate Montreal for some reason. True, not for some. I totally understand them. Totally I don't know. Understand Every them. time I go to Montreal, I'm always drunk anyway, so it's like I'm never sober in that whole yeah. province. I, I mean, it, one thing about Montreal: best food in the country, hands down. Like, you, really. You, Oh yeah, absolutely. The Montreal meats that you can get, like fucking the Jewish stuff that you get down over in Montreal, way better than what you get here. Let me tell you, I'm a huge fan of like Jew. I'm actually <laughs> so a huge I, fan of the Jewish I, I thought you were saying like, like, yeah, the worst of Montreal, better than. I thought that's what you were saying. <laughs> no, it's a, no, like actually, unironically, I'll give Montreal the one thing. The only th- the only reason I like Quebec stay in the fucking country is because of their food, and and the women there are beautiful looking, and the city is. Well, the city the city is larger than fucking Toronto. I'll say that much. Toronto's like constricted as fuck. <clears throat> but hey, one day I'll move down to Texas and hopefully get abducted by a call to knows. Hope I can arrange that. Dude, I just want to go down to Texas, shoot some guns, and live a simple lifestyle. That's all I want, man. That's what I've been doing. It's yeah. pretty fun. Yeah. I love every time I say Texas on Twitter, they're like, why would you ever move to that evil, disgusting, deplorable state? I'm like, Texas, there's a misogynist there that has a yeah. cow named Mud Baby. I'm like, dude, when I was <laughs> when I was in when I was in Texas, dude, let me tell you, I Houston's got to be one of the most progressive fucking cities you have. Because when I landed, there was like Kenneth Copeland's fucking like a mega church and right across it is like Planned Parenthood. I'm like, boys. Uh, this that's pretty is- awesome. <laughs> like this one freeway <laughs> disconnect. Like if you looked at it from afar and took a photo, it's like this one freeway separates the extreme ideologies. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland, <laughs> Planned Parenthood. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like my first reaction to that, I'm like, wait, that building hasn't been fucking firebombed yet. Like what? Yeah, where's Ethan Klein? We need we need to call some some terrorists. Well, pretty soon, oh like uh, Texas is going to be like overtake because a bunch of people from California are heading over there. Like, I think Houston, they're mostly going Dallas. to Austin. Yeah, yeah. Austin, I heard, is pretty much like Los Angeles at this point. Like they're just it's gentrified. Yeah. It's dude, it's gotten expensive out there too. Like mm-hmm. there was some footage I was seeing now. Like there were like fucking. Yeah, health stores, like everything. It's yeah, very much the same. The only thing they're missing is like the dispensaries. Mm. But last I checked, Texas is very hard line against any uh, marijuana. They're very much like CBD oil, and that's pretty much the best you get. But, uh, well, to mm. be fair, Nux, Ethan recently yeah. has been very tame on the podcast. Like, goddamn. I'll tell you what, man. Oh, that man is like man, Neo like from the Matrix strikes. dodging YouTube strikes, brother. That is... That is, I mean, like, that's the thing with the politics stuff, man. Once you, once you're into the politics game, you're on a watchful eye from every algorithm, dude. It's, it's a hard game to keep up. It requires a certain type of character. Dude, Zeep. Yeah. You getting out of politics, best thing you could have done for yourself. I noticed. Politics so bad. in 20, from 2019 to like 2020, early 2021, my channel grew and maybe I'm coping. My channel grew probably like 800 subscribers then as soon as I moved away from the well, politics not, stuff, you're not just alienating really, the fans is the thing, right? It's it's like really it really did not watch you because politics yeah. is like one of the once you get heavily into the political side, you have to cater to your extreme because you already isolated fifty percent of the fucking country or the viewpoints against you, right? Like that's pretty much how it is. For me, like mm-hmm. I don't even get into politics whatsoever because I'm not too, yeah. I'm not smart enough to engage in politics. I'm just a fucking dumb fuck engineer is all I am. So. Don't have anything to add about left or right wing shit. Mm. I mean, yeah. 
I just yeah, even I'm just a dumb. F- even when I did do politics, I tried to like do like I guess the the centrist approach, being like, well, blah 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 blah. But you know, it's even then I kind of like hated it in a way. Even though pe- my audience loved it, the the ones there are people who I get comments every now and then, just like, when are you going to do politics yeah. stuff again? I'm like, probably not again. Maybe in a live stream format, but I'm not sure. To be fair, rational rational political takes never get anywhere. Yeah, you, you need to be yeah, radical yeah, in some direction. Either you're Coach yeah. Red, Red Pill, Pill or you're like fucking, you know, cuckold Constantine talking about sharing your fucking wife with like everyone. Like it's, in, yeah, you got to be like one <laughs> or the other, dude. It's like when I made cuckold the Andrew Tate videos, like the comments is like, "Are you being a cuck?" I'm like, "When when did I ever jump into that? What the fuck? Why can't you be normal?" Like. Why do you have to be on the extreme end of one or the other? It's like either you hate women or yeah. you're sharing your significant other with the boys. I'm like, guys, okay, sh- there's there's middle. It's, and the worst thing is like you'll see like the comments on some of the comments on Muda's video. It's like, okay, you're roasting Andrew Tate, but do you have? Yeah, a I'm like, what? I'm like, what? It's what? Like, what? what? Disprove anything? <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I do not own a Bugatti. No. Like I said, I consider I it a terrible. Uh, investment but um you know by my response to that i'm like where's your guys's bugatti like i have to ask them like where did the... yeah oh uh, they'll get one they're joining hustler yeah they're university. hustler's university like, it's like guaranteed within five years isn't like the results like hustler's university people have gotten like you know it's the amazon like selling stuff grand. on amazon but also like they get like five hundred two thousand dollars like a yeah. month like that doesn't make you yeah. rich it doesn't no, even... that's like well, no, I saw the, like the copy. That's thing. barely even livable. Yeah. That that's part of the indoctrination. Well, well, co- that's why there's that, that's part of the genius. Okay, he's like, oh. you join Hustlers University and then you start making like a thousand dollars a month, and he's like, like you made it, bro. You made like the it. thing You're with the coffee, now. like Coffee Zilla so made a video like where he won. actually went into the program and he talked about like how the definition of being rich, cash rich, in the entire program is five thousand dollars. Now, look. I, I'm going to say this much to my audience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or to our audiences, all of us here, every, all four of us, all of our audiences, $5,000 is a lot of money. It is. And there's no doubt about it. 5,000, it's, it's a good amount of money. You can, you know, do a, lot, a few things with it. That's rent for a couple months for some people. That's, you know, a car. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. Or depending on month, where you, you're But like, <laughs> guys, five grand isn't going to get you anywhere in the larger scope of things you know like if you're talking about because the way that it's always built it's like you want to get these lamborghinis and these bugattis right but five grand isn't going to get you close to a lamborghini or a bugatti you know like if you want to if you want to own a lamborghini right like and you want to you want to own it and you don't want to like slave for the lamborghini you got to make at least over 10 12 000 a month you know that's depending on where you live right like if you're making let's say 150k a year you know, in your house, like, you know, you're not paying, like, you're not paying my property value prices. Like, you have a, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah. but that's the thing you see, right? There's a lot of people who live in shitty houses, but they have like brand new fucking Camaros parked outside. So you buy a that's, car yeah. like a Lamborghini. And one thing people don't understand about buying Lamborghinis is like when you buy a Lambo or like any supercar, every mile you drive, you're chucking just fucking 30, 40 bucks out the window, right? Like 50 bucks. Because that's how fast that car depreciates. So it's like these people sell you these like ideas. They talk about building wealth and investing your money. Well, they're already pitching you the dumbest purchases you can make, which are fancy, dumb supercars, you know? Like no one needs a fancy, dumb supercar. Like how many people here have considered owning a fancy, dumb supercar? No. Well, you Have you? Have you, Nux? No. Not me. I would, I would only buy a fancy supercar. No. Like I'd buy a fucking no. gtr or corvette because they're 100k not like a bugatti and the only reason i do it is for a hentai mobile like just to just to yeah. slap hentai all yeah like i i had one point like so this <laughs> is a while yeah. back i remember hearing dead yeah. mouse bought a ferrari right and like he couldn't put his logo on the ferrari because of some in like paperwork shit so i, I was considering buying a ferrari dumb and just like dude. uh and like putting like the fucking like hentai shit on now i might even consider i might actually buy a nux taku ferrari like Nux hentai Ferrari, like I might do that. Oh God! Dude. I mean, oh, to be fair, so you were considering buying a Ferrari for your like big Nelk expose. That was for Corvette for a Save Corvette. the Kids. Yeah, after that, I wanted to get the Save the Kids. I actually still can because the Corvette's still on back order. <clears throat> so if I do get the chance on filling in the order, I might just do it. 
and I might give it away to like a fan, actually. Give it away to me. <laughs> oh, Caleb's the a internal. Fan. He's dude, a fan. that actually, dude, that mirrors the that would be scan perfect. so well. <laughs> right, because it wasn't, yeah. wasn't the whole thing. They had like this Ferrari that they wanted to give away to a fan, and the random fan was like some YouTuber yeah. that lives too much. No, 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 away. That, 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 wasn't, that wasn't that one. The giveaways for their crypto and save the kids oh, were just suddenly going to the same accounts over and over and over again. Oh, so that's one thing we could do. It's like, Caleb, you could just join the entry and you could magically win. I like this idea. <laughs> uh, dude, you, you, you know oh. you have to do one of those Twitter things. It's like retweet and drop a follow for a chance to win a like a Lamborghini or whatever. And then on the podcast, you'll say, "And the winner is." You pull like a name out of a hat, Caleb. <laughs> and then the hat falls over, and it's just Caleb They're written all, Caleb. all over everything. <laughs> all Caleb. No, 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 no. It's not just one Caleb. Yeah. Literally, only people with the name Caleb. Did you know that was the hundred and fortieth most popular name of nineteen ninety six? There's a lot of Caleb's. <laughs> No, but like, but, but the thing is, it's like that's one of the that's one of the routes that like, can, when it comes to like these when it comes to these programs, right? Like, getting these guys in, it's like Nuck said, right? Like, once you make a thousand bucks in their minds, it's like you made it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, now we're in the land of Rolexes and Bugattis, and it's like Bugatti. a grand ain't gonna get you there. Bugatti. Yeah. And it, dude, some of these people have really shitty spending habits. Like, they'll join a program, they'll make enough money to buy a Rolex or something. Who knows if it's even a real Rolex? And it's like, now I'm part of it. Now chicks are going to be magnetized. Pussy is going to magnetize to me. And I'm like, oh, really, guys? Sexual is that sexual access. When he says that I'm spending 99% of my energy finding a sexual partner, I kind of cringe a little bit because I'm like, you're probably doing it wrong there, buddy. Because uh, ain't nobody needing to put 100% of their energy finding any form of sexual <laughs> yeah, activity. I don't know. That, what the that sounded like the biggest self-report I've ever heard in my life. I <laughs> yeah. saw that. I was like, wait, what? 99% like, of I'm... your energy, bro. It's not too hard if you're a decent human being, you know? Yeah, if you're a decent human being, finding sex is not difficult. Finding meaningful relationships is difficult. This is why, like, when it comes to being a man, like, I, I personally prefer people like, you know, um, Donut Operator, Caleb, you know, Charlie Critical. Yeah. These people are, like, what I consider to be, like, men. Knox, people like you, like Larry, even you, because it's, like, for me, real men, and I think this is the message, because, like, one of the things that really I, I should have touched upon in this, or, like, all of us should touch upon is that, it's not one thing like it's easy to demonize the people that follow people like this, these pickup artists and all these types and just call them incels. Right. It's another thing to give them proper advice too. like if you want to be a man. Right. And like the traditional like man that you follow these people to be as then you need to focus on being yourself, you know, finding your own fucking path in life, putting in your due hours to actually, you know, succeed. And that's pretty much all it comes down to. If your whole idea is like, I got to have like meaningless sex for like 10 years, that's not going to fucking lead to anything worthwhile going down in your life. You know, like that's just it's it's a bad it's a bad mentality. It's a toxic mentality to keep. And it's one that like you have to imagine, like my dad would kill me if I turned out to be like Andrew Tate, like no joke. My dad would fucking give me the Walter White Rice and fucking deal. Like, that's it. Like, I'd be getting the call like Lydia at the end of Breaking Bad. You know, my dad would be like, ah, oh, you're a douchebag. Well, like, good night, son. Hey, Muda. Do, do you have, feel short of breath? Hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I noticed you've that's been drinking a lot of stevia lately. <laughs> do you ever, like, yeah. feel good that you're not, like, 14 or 15 right now? And, like, you're not, like, getting brainwashed so glad, by, yeah. like... Uh, the Andrew like Andrew Tate shit like being like oh common Andrew Tate W like relying on one human being to rely your I'm entire personality on. I'm so glad can, I'm past that age, man. Can you these people will be in ten years? They'll say, oh yeah, I was a Jake Paul, or you know, it's like oh yeah, I was yeah, I was a, a Tateist. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's that that's why that's why like for me going too hard on these people hurts because it's like there's still kids that fall yeah. for this right like it's easy to get like enveloped by the shit at 14 you know yeah. like life and your perception of like the world around you changes a lot once you've been to like post secondary school you've got a job you know you go out like it's a different thing right like fucking i'm sure that you can agree too larry like when you were younger the way you perceive some of these larger figures like dude i used to look at yeah. some of these youtubers back in the day as like godly as fuck and then once i started working and like the world started to like unravel itself perceptions change and i figured out how to be a right person you know oh, when i was like i think it really 16 or 17 i would see like sjw compilations or like these like mm -hmm. right-leaning like really right-leaning 
uh, users and I'd be like, this is awesome. This is based. And I'd like go to school and be like, screw all the SJWs, screw all the feminists. They're cringe and they're not awesome. You know, it, it, you change. Uh, you change yeah. over the years as you grow older, as you become more educated, you know? Yeah. All, all we need is like proper father figures in life because what I've seen about Andrew is like, this is just because fatherless the behavior. Is not a good substitute. <laughs> Oh, dude, you know, the thing I the thing we have to say about it is like, it's not all Andrew Tate's fault. Like he's a fucking like dipshit himself. It's also the parents fault. Like who the fuck gives their kids unfettered access to TikTok? Yeah, me. That's true. <laughs> Come on. Okay, you give Peter Griffin access to TikTok. It's not the same. P. P. And, then, and, then, and, and, then, and then what happens is Caleb looks at his credit card transactions later and it's like, ah, pink sauce. Why do I have a thousand dollars worth of this Dude, coming I to my need, house? I need to get mine. I'm desperate. Andrew Tate sucks, but the pink sauce stuff, that's where it's at. That's, that's where it's that's at. That's way better, dude. dude. that is hazardous. <laughs> oh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're a while in. Zeep, uh, do you have any socials you want to plug in before we t- time it yeah, out? Yeah, subscribe to Zeepstered, uh, but also mm-hmm. follow Zeepstered on Twitter. Uh, I post some oh, okay. awesome stuff. Uh, if you scroll through my timeline, like 90% of the stuff I've tweeted about has been Better Call Saul. Uh, so there's that. Yeah, so if you don't want to get spoiled, don't follow us. <laughs> <laughs> no Saul spoilers, actually. Just a bunch of okay. Saul memes. Well, you got to follow Zeep on just that account. The Saul memes are worth it alone. And uh, also, we've got our uh, podcast co-hosts, hosts as well in general, Oompaville. All right one of the uh, best um, chemical manufacturers I've ever met on YouTube. And accidental racists. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's too me. And Nux, who, who is one of the best, smartest PNGs that we know all around. I used to be a PNG. I've evolved, okay? I moved now. I'm you like, moved to a GIF? I moved to a GIF. <laughs> <laughs> And if you genuinely enjoy dog shit content, well, you can always come to some ordinary gamers for that. That said, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is all of us, and we are out.